Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. This is episode two in my new series called Let's Play Together. In this one, I'm gonna be playing the great Roy Hargrove tune, Strasbourg Saint Denis. If you didn't check out episode one last week, when I did a simple blues, you can check that out with the link in the description down below. For those who don't know, my Let's Play Together series is a way for us to kind of play together over the internet. Obviously we can't do it live, but this is kind of the next best thing, because if you don't know from watching that last week's video, what I do here is I play a song and I talk about it. I give you backing tracks and audio files, worksheets, lead sheets, stuff like that. And then I solo and I leave space for you to solo and we trade back and forth. And it's a really fun thing. And a bunch of you have already sent me recordings of you playing along with my recording from last week. I've loved listening to them. So if that was you, thanks so much. Shout out to you. And if you want to record yourself for this week, I'll tell you about that in a little bit but it'd be a really fun thing for me to check out and I love hearing all the recordings. For this one, I have a worksheet in concert pitch, E flat and B flat. And in that worksheet also has the melody on there, the lead sheet, stuff about soloing the chords as well. So you wanna make sure you have that. I'm also including the audio file of my recording as well as just the backing track that I'm using just so you can have to practice on your own. The way to get that completely free is just go to the top of the description down below or just go directly to davepollock.com slash Strasburg. Speaking of that worksheet, I'm gonna jump inside of it now. I'm gonna show you around, show you the melody, show you some solo things on it with the chord changes and some other ideas, give you some tips and tricks. And then after that, I'm gonna play my recording of this song and then we're gonna be able to play together. So let's jump inside that worksheet now. All right, as you see, we're inside the worksheet here, and I am using the E flat sheet for alto or Barry sax. If you're playing a different instrument in a different key, make sure you have the correct worksheet for your key. So first up, I have the melody here, and I wrote original 16th notes. Why did I write that? I'll explain in a minute when we go to the next page. This song is broken down into two halves, the A section and the B section, although the A section is repeated when you play the melody, so it's like A, A, B, but each section is eight measures long. From the beginning here, you see 16th notes. How do you play these? Da, 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 No, here's where some knowledge of the original song, or at least Roy Hargrove playing it, helps. He plays swing 16ths, and they are staccato. That's right. If you listen to the original, you'll get the vibe. You'll get the idea. Or if you listen to mine, same kind of thing, because I listen to Roy played so many times that that's what I'm thinking of when I play it. So it's not your standard, if I said swing 16th, that's normally what you would do. This is slightly different for this specific tune, so make sure you work on that articulation. The other thing you might see is it says optional 8VA all the way till here. Roy plays it up there with the trumpet, and most people when they play it, especially if you're on alto or trumpet, you're gonna play this up an octave. If you're on tenor, you're probably just gonna start on the B flat, that's with the octave key, you're not gonna play altissimo. I guess you could, but you don't have to. Also, you don't have to play this 8VA if you're a trumpet or an alto player. You can just play it where it is, it's totally fine. Up an octave, cool, work towards it, but if those high notes are giving you problems, don't worry about it, just get the actual melody. All right, so along with the melody, you'll notice that these are all in concert F minor pentatonic. So it's basically that concert F minor pentatonic scale. So if you already know what that is, you can eliminate some other notes when reading this and playing through it. So you have, that's your motif, that kind of sets the melody up. Then it repeats. Then a little extra part. Okay. Then the same motif starts again. Then here it changes. You'll hear me play it. You'll hear Roy play it. You'll get the sense of it. One thing when listening, it's great to listen. It's great to have good ears when you're listening so you can play along and that's really the best way. But also it's good to have some reading chops as well. And this might be a little tricky for some of you. There's like 16th notes, there's 16th note rests, there's a rest, then a 16th note, eighth note, quarter note, dotted eighth, oh, it's crazy. I have something to help you out in a second, so hang tight. So once you get through the first two A sections, we're gonna go on to the B section. If you know the original or you listen to it, you might say, isn't there supposed to be like a call and response thing? Yes, they do that when they play it, and it, a lot of time it's kind of improvised and people are kind of playing over one another. I just wanted to write here what I played in the recording and keep it simple so when we play together, it makes sense and we're not just kind of randomly playing. But if you want to do the call and response where I go, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, then you respond right away. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba. That's totally cool. That'd be fun. Otherwise, you can just play exactly what I wrote. The one difference here is now you're going to go to a more legato swing articulation. 
It's not da, 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 not here. That's only the A section. More of like a traditional swing type of articulation. So it kind of goes up, goes back down, goes up, goes back down. Then the last kind of line here, kind of echoes the end of the A section there. And that's the melody. That's a great melody. It lines everything up well, especially if you do the right articulation, the right vibe, it's going to sound awesome. Now, if looking at this is tricky for you and it's really throwing you for a loop, I have something for you that the jazz police are going to hate so much and I really don't care. I wrote optional eighth notes. What I basically did here was I wrote everything twice as slow, so you're going to have to think twice as fast. So instead of thinking one E and a two E and a three and four, one, two, here's what I wrote here. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, one and two and three. Do you want to be tapping that fast? No. Should you really be thinking like this? No. But if just viewing this page right here where the eighth note sheet, not the 16th notes, if that helps you get it under your fingers better, if it just clicks better for you, then use it. Who cares if it's not the right way or the way it's supposed to be? If it gets you to playing the song to sound correct, then it, then it is correct, right? If it sounds right, it is right. There's two types of music, good and bad. Just don't worry about it. I'm not worried about what the performers thinking on stage. So if you're practicing this and this helps you use it and uh, screw the jazz, please. Okay. So this is the optional eighth notes. It will sound the exact same as this. If you play it or think twice as fast, the track will still stay the same. The backing track doesn't change, but if you're thinking this, you just have to think twice as fast and everything will line up exactly there. So that's the melody. Once we get through the melody, now let's look at the solo section. Even though the song itself, like the melody is 24 bars, right? A, A, B, eight bars each. We're just gonna say the solo section is just these eight bars, if you're thinking 16th notes, because it's the same chords over and over again. It's the same three sections of eight measures. We're just gonna say the solo section is one chunk of eight measures. So if you're thinking 16th notes with that slow quarter note, you have the chords here, G minor seven, up a whole step, A minor seven, up a half step, B flat major seven, once again, alto key. Then it repeats, G minor, a minor, B flat. Then it repeats again, G minor, A minor, B flat major, but then you have a C7, which functions as a five chord, leading to F major, which in this case now is our one chord, concert A flat major. Then we have this chord at the end, D7, flat nine. This is also a five chord, but in the key of G minor. Five to one in major here, five to one in minor here. If you're confused about what I just said, or you're like, I, I can't solo over these chords. It, it's too complicated. I don't know how to, how do I connect G minor to A minor? What key are they in? I have something for you. Also down in the description below, you'll see a link that is davepollock.com slash free masterclass. I have an entirely free masterclass video along with PDFs that goes with it. It's about a 40 minute lesson, but you can have it completely free for life along with the PDFs. Watch as many times as you want. It doesn't go away after a couple days or something. Go to that website, davepollock.com slash free masterclass. Once again, links in the description. That will help you learn to voice lead between chords so you can play more lyrical, melodic, more horizontal solos. What I call vertical solos is where kind of, oh, I see G minor, I play over G minor. Oh, there's A minor, A minor. Play over A minor. Oh, B flat major. With, but there's no connection horizontally. This masterclass, I go through my simple six-step voice leading process, and I teach you how to improvise through chord changes. I give you all these different ways to do it. That's pretty simple. It breaks it down. I give you some examples and you will be playing more lyrical, melodic and horizontal solos in no time. I guarantee it. It will help you on this tune as well. Because of that, I'm not going to be getting in depth on the chords here. Once again, in the description down below, I know I'm sending you there a lot, but I just have a lot of resources there for you and I keep adding to them every week. I have two playlists. One is a saxophone specific playlist, but one is for improvisation lessons, completely free stuff that's on YouTube. You don't even have to go to my website. There's a whole playlist. I did a 251 series, a full masterclass, whole bunch of stuff there. So if you have any trouble with these chords, you don't know what the chords are. You don't know what a 251 is, 51 in minor. I did a whole thing on minor two fives, major two fives, whole bunch of different stuff. Go check those out. That's on YouTube, completely free as well. So back into this, that's the whole solo section. So those eight bars. If you want to think Eighth notes, like we said, you're gonna think twice as fast, but think eighth notes, it's gonna be this. It'll be technically 16 bars. 
It's not the greatest way to think about it, but once again, if you're thinking this melody here, you might wanna think this here. I'm still gonna call it an eight bar solo section, but you're just thinking twice as fast. That's why it's 16 bars. Hope that makes sense. Finally, if we jump down to the bottom here, I'm gonna give you a few different ways to think about the solo section. In this song, I don't do one version doing one way and another version another way like I did last week with the simple blues. I just do one take for this and I add a bunch of these elements in there. I'm gonna go through them now. So the first one, if you're super confused and you don't know anything about these chords but you just want to play the tune, look at the D minor or concert F minor pentatonic scale. Just like I said, the beginning of the melody in the A section uses this, you can use this to improvise. The notes will work. The great thing about pentatonic scales is you can invert them, play different intervals, jump around. They usually work because they get rid of any of the really crunchier notes that might, you know, land on some bad things. It, it's not foolproof, especially in this case. You know, some of the notes are going to be crunchy. Some of them aren't going to be perfect. But at its core, it will work. You focus on the non-note musical elements, the rhythms, the articulations, the motifs, that kind of stuff, and just play these five notes, you're going to be fine. Okay. Now, if you want to expand a little bit more, the F major scale or concert A flat major scale. By the way, D minor pentatonic is the same five notes as F major pentatonic. So the only notes we're adding here are going to be B flat and E. So it gets a little, you have to be a little more careful when you play some of these notes, especially over some of these chords. But if you just stay in the key of concert A flat major throughout, that'll work as well. It's, you got to take a little more care because there's a couple extra notes that might cause some rub in there, but I think it should be totally cool. That's a great way to go through it as well. Finally, you have the actual chord tones of each chord. So this isn't how to play the chords or what to do over them. This is just literally what are the chord tones of G minor seven, A minor seven. By the way, I do still use the key signature throughout. So if you're wondering, where's the flat sign on the B? Well, it's in the key signature. So G minor seven, A minor seven, B flat major, C seven, F major, then D seven flat nine. By the way, just a little heads up, a lot of times this chord is actually really a D13 flat nine because when they play it live, a lot of time the harmony horn, if it's not the trumpet, usually the alto, plays the note at the very end of the melody. They play concert D natural, so B on alto, which would be the 13th here, which is a really cool, there's a cool triad you can play here on alto, a B major triad. So the B, I'm talking about over this chord, over this chord, the B is the 13. The D sharp or E flat right here is the flat nine. And then the F sharp here is the third. It creates a really cool sound. You'll hear me use it in my recording. I love the sound over this dominant seven flat nine chord. All right, so now it's time to play together, or at least I'm gonna put my recording here. And by the way, I'm including in those downloads an audio file, just an MP3 of this. So it's a little bit easier maybe for you to download and play along with, but you can just like rip this video or play along with this video as well. So here's the roadmap. We're gonna play the melody together. So I'm gonna play the melody on there. We're gonna play it together, just one time through A, A, B. Then I'm gonna solo for eight bars, which is one chorus in our case. Then you're gonna solo for eight bars. Then I'm gonna do four, you're gonna do four. I'm gonna do four again, you're gonna do four. So two sets of eight bars trading fours. Then we're gonna go just one set of eight bars trading twos, two, 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 two. Then for the final eight bars, we're gonna play together. So you'll, you'll hear me just play for eight bars you're gonna play over top. Make sense? So once again, melody together, eight, eight, four, 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 two, 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 together for eight. Quick note about the backing track that I have here. There is an eight bar bass intro before the melody starts. So don't just start right when you hear the bass start playing. That is an eight bar intro. You'll hear me come in with the melody after those eight measures. Sound good? All right, I hope you have fun doing this. I hope you enjoy kind of playing along. It was great to hear people in last week's video use some of the motifs that I was creating, play off of them, do different things, and it really made it sound like we were playing together, and I hope you get to do that here as well and enjoy playing along with me on Strasbourg St. Denis. Here we go.
All right. I hope you enjoyed my performance of Strasbourg, and I hope you have a really fun time practicing this song and then playing along with me. If you do get the chance to record yourself, I'd love to hear it, whether it's just audio or audio and video. You could tag me maybe on Instagram at Dave Pollock Music, or you can email me like a YouTube link or a Dropbox or whatever else you want, Google Drive, info at DavePollock.com. I'll listen to all the recordings. I've had a great time listening to them so far, and I can't wait to hear even more from you. What other songs do you want to hear in this series? I'll do really anything that you want. It doesn't have to be just straight jazz stuff. It can be kind of whatever. As long as we can play together, I can create a track or find a track for it. Speaking of tracks, by the way, I did not create this backing track. This is from the YouTube channel Guitar Improvisation, and I know they have a bunch of other tracks on there, so go check them out. It's a really cool track, works really well for this, it includes the intro and all that. It's just really awesome. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.